my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today I'm bringing to you a DIY using these aluminum flowers that you could get at the Dollar Tree right now. Again, these are another piece that is a seasonal piece. They're a summer piece. They're not gonna be around very long. They're in the garden section, and I guess they're used for lawn and garden decor or for your front door. They've got some that have stakes on them with these same flowers. These are a great decor piece. When I saw them, again, I had so many ideas of how I could use them in DIYs. I could use them as embellishments to add to a DIY. And so I picked up several of these while they're in stock because I wanna be able to use them throughout the year and I think that they're gonna make a great addition to any DIY. Today's DIY is so farmhouse, so stinking cute, I can hardly stand it. It's a bit different than any of the other DIYs that I've brought to you because I've just been feeling really inspired with some of this summer decor that the Dollar Tree has right now. And so today I'm gonna to be showing you what I do with these aluminum flowers. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you what I have in mind for today's DIY. From the Dollar Tree, I picked up one of these mason jar wall decor plaques. I also picked up three of these tin flowers that you can find in the garden section. I picked up this fat quarter by Waverly from Walmart for 97 cents and I'll be using a scrap piece of burlap, some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of pumpkin, ivory, and maize, three wood skewers, and some twine. I'm gonna start this project off by taking the mason jar wall decor plaque. I'm gonna disassemble this I'm gonna remove the embellishments from the front of it. This is gonna ruin the front of the mason jar, but that's okay not to worry because we don't need the front of this anyway. I'm gonna set these embellishments aside because I may be able to use them in an upcoming DIY. Using a razor, I'm gonna remove the paper from the front of this. Yes, you can flip this mason jar over and use the back of it, but I didn't like the handle of the mason jar on the other side. I like it on this side, so that's why I'm gonna remove the paper. If you don't mind the handle being on the other side, then flip it over and you're saving yourself a bit of work. At the top of the mason jar here, there's this straw. I'm gonna remove it by scoring it with the razor a couple of times on the front and the back and it'll come off pretty easily. I forgot to mention this in the beginning. I will be using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of hazelnut, and I'm just gonna paint up at the top of the mason jar where the metal ring would be. And while I've got the hazelnut paint out, I'm gonna go ahead and paint all three of the wood skewers as well with it. Now taking some of this matte Mod Podge, I picked this 32 ounce bottle up from Walmart for $9.97 because I've got a few upcoming DIYs that I'll be using Mod Podge for. And so I figured I might as well just buy the big bottle instead of buying just the dollar one at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna place a generous amount of Mod Podge on the lower half of my mason jar. I'm not gonna put it up where the lid is just yet. Right now I'm just gonna focus on the bottom half of the jar. Now this is where the Waverly Fat Quarter comes in. I'm gonna place this right on top of the Mod Podge. There's really no need to worry about ironing your fabric because once you place it down on the Mod Podge, your fabric's gonna smooth out pretty nicely. And I'm gonna place this right below the ring of the mason jar. Now that I've got the fabric covering the bottom half of the mason jar, I'm gonna apply a second coat of Mod Podge over the fabric to the top of the fabric. Now that I've got the fabric in place, for the top of the mason jar here, I'm gonna apply a coat of Mod Podge as well. I had this scrap piece of burlap on hand that I'm gonna be using. You can get a roll of burlap at Walmart for fairly cheap in their wedding section. You don't have to get it just at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna place it on the top of the mason jar here. The purpose behind me painting the top of the mason jar with the hazelnut paint was because I didn't want the cardboard to show through 
the burlap. And so I figured I'd just go ahead and paint it brown so that way if it did show through, the cardboard wasn't showing through. If you don't wanna do it and you wanna skip that step, you can. In the end, it really didn't end up showing through because of the burlap that I used, but if you're using a thinner weave, a lighter weave of burlap, you most definitely will wanna make sure to paint it. After I've got my burlap placed, I'm gonna apply another coat of Mod Posh here over the burlap. Since it's good and hot outside, I'm gonna set this outside for a couple of hours and let it get good and dry. Once the Mod Podge is dry, you'll find that it makes it a bit easier to cut off the excess fabric because it is a bit stiffer. I used a combination of a razor and scissors to cut off the excess fabric. Because I wanted to move the video along a bit quicker, the Mod Podge didn't completely dry on this, so I'm gonna pop it in the oven at 135 degrees for about 15 or 20 minutes, and that should do the trick. Now I'm sure you're all wondering, when is she gonna get to the part about what she does with the aluminum flowers? I'm gonna disassemble these flowers. I'm gonna take the welcome sign and the chain off of all three flowers. Now, because these are aluminum, they're pretty flexible and bendable. And so I'm gonna take the inner flower petals and I'm gonna just slightly curve them in just to give this more of a 2D, 3D effect. Now taking some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ivory, I'm gonna give these aluminum flowers a good base coat. I'm gonna do this to all three of them. These flowers ended up needing two coats of the Waverly ivory because of the color of the flower. It kept pulling through the ivory, but after two coats, you couldn't see it anymore, so I was happy with the coverage. Then using some of Waverly's maize on the inner flower here, I'm gonna do a type of dry brush stroke. I don't want to fully cover these petals because I'm looking for that old rustic look. And so just by kind of putting a light bit of paint on the tip of the brush and lightly brushing over it, you're going to get that weathered look, that aged look, and that's what I'm going for with this flower. It's okay if the ivory shows through, we want it to, because it's just going to kind of give it that chipped paint look. And so again, on the inner flower here, I'm gonna use maize on all three flowers. Now for the outer petals of this flower, I'll be using Waverly's pumpkin, and I'm gonna use the same technique, that dry brush stroke on all of the petals. I really, for this DIY, wanted to go with some bright, vibrant colors. I wanted to kind of get away from the browns, although I love the browns because I just, am such an earth tone person. I wanted to go with something bright and vibrant for summer. And so that's why I've chosen the green fabric, the yellow paint, the, this pumpkin paint, because I really wanted something that screamed farmhouse summer. And lastly, for the center of the flower, I'm gonna go with the Waverly hazelnut paint, just to add a bit of brown, kind of give it that sunflower feel. Now it's about time to get this all put together. So I'm gonna start off by taking the skewers that I painted with the hazelnut paint, and I'm gonna cut them in two different sizes. I cut mine at about five inches, and I believe eight inches. It really is up to you. You kinda of gotta look at it once you're putting this together to see the height that you want. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. I'm gonna hot glue the longer of the three skewers in the center of the mason jar at the top on the back. Then I'm gonna hot glue the two smaller ones off to the side at an angle. So this is what it should look like from the back. And yep, you guessed it, I'm gonna hot glue the aluminum flowers to the top of the skewers. And because I have a bit of scraps left of the burlap, I decided that I would make a couple of leaves for my flowers. So I made the burlap two layers thick so it's easier to cut. I can just cut two leaves at the same time and I'm just gonna freehand these. I'm not trying to make anything perfect. I think just with burlap and farmhouse all on its own, it kind of just adds to the character when it isn't perfect. And I think the perfect spot for these leaves is on this center skewer here in the middle. 
And I think this DIY is in need of one of my twine flowers. If you have not seen my tutorial on how to make these, I'll link that video in the description box below. It's an easy to do tutorial on my twine flowers and I think I did twine bows in it too. Because I had these orange and yellow buttons on hand already, I thought that these would be the perfect addition to this flower and it would kind of tie in all of the colors together. And so I just glued two of them together and I'm gonna put it in the center of my twine flower. And I think the perfect spot for this is right here at the top of the mason jar off to the side. Right here where the burlap and fabric meet, I figured I'd soften it up by adding just a bit of this thicker twine that I had on hand. This is a twine that you can get at Walmart, I believe by DeBrice. It comes in a two pound spool for three or four dollars and so I figured it would just soften up this edge just a bit. Now if you want to be done with this DIY now, you can be. But for me, it's just not rustic enough. It's a bit too clean. And so I'm gonna take a paintbrush and a black ink pad. Dollar Tree has black ink pads. Sometimes they run a bit dry, but if you just add a bit of water to them, it gets them nice and moist again and they work just fine. I'm gonna take my paintbrush, I'm gonna dip it in my ink pad, and I'm gonna run this along the edges of my mason jar, wherever it is that I wanna distress this. I figured I'd also distress it inside the mason jar as well just to give it more of that rustic dirty look this look may not be for everybody some people you may like just that clean look i personally love that rustic age look and i think you achieve that just by adding a bit of ink or even paint from time to time wherever it is you want it to be a bit aged on your diy to hang this up i'm just going to use a piece of this thicker twine and i'm going to hot glue it to the back I decided to go with the Gorilla Glue sticks for this part because I wanted a stronger glue to hold this twine. I didn't want to risk this falling. And because this is a cardboard type mason jar, I think that the Gorilla Glue sticks are going to hold it fine. I've had this up for about a week and I've had no problems with it falling yet. And there we have it. This is such a fun, rustic farmhouse summer piece with the bright, vibrant colors, but it still has that aged, distressed look. I loved these cardboard mason jars so much that I picked up several of them because I have so many more DIYs in mind using these. This is such a fun piece to either use on your patio or even indoors. It would even make for a perfect gift to give. How stinking cute is this mason jar with these flowers? I love this piece and you can really get so creative with this. Like I said, I did it using fabric. You could do it with paint if you wanted to. You could do it with scrapbooking paper. Endless possibilities of what you could do with this. I just think that the fabric, adding that different texture to it just kind of adds to it with the burlap that I added to the top as well. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY. Please give this video a thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of those thumbs up, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget and bye for now, everybody. Music